Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna Satmi uh, back with another video of our uh, abdominal series and today we're beginning lower part of the pelvic area this is known as the perineum alright uh, to all those who haven't subscribed to my channel yet I make anatomy a piece of cake and I focus on the concepts of anatomy so I think you should definitely go ahead and click that subscribe button so guys let's get started with today's topic these are our objectives of the day these are what we're gonna cover today what is the perineum exactly uh, the perineum is the area of your body which is the lowermost part of your entire trunk it lies below your pelvic diaphragm and below your pelvic outlet uh, what you're seeing here is the pelvic diaphragm these muscles right i'm not talking about this area these muscles these are the forming the floor of the pelvis so basically you can see this is the pelvis there are these muscles that join together and they form the floor of the pelvis as you can see here like a bowl all right so these are the lower limit of your uh, pelvis so up on top of these uh, muscles uh, are your pelvic viscera like the uterus and your urinary bladder etc and these are basically known as the pelvic diaphragm these pelvic diaphragm muscles are forming the floor of your pelvis and just below the pelvic diaphragm is where your perineum lies so it begins from here this is the lower limit of your pelvic diaphragm and beneath this your entire perineum has begun right so in males this perineum consists of two openings which are for the urethra and for the anal canal and in females it has like three openings one is for urethra one is for the vagina and one is for the anal canal basically your uh, perineum is diamond shaped structure now this is the pubic symphysis we all know this is the pubic arch we know these are the that this is the uh, pubic bone this is the ischium bone so the uh, bone connecting them is the conjoint ischiopubic rami i know that could be involved uh, posteriorly i can see this is the sacrotuberous ligament because it's running from the sacrum to the uh, ischial tuberosity so this is a sacrotuberous ligament and one thing i can see is the tip of the coccyx uh, by the way over here the sacrotuberous ligament is actually uh, removed so ignore that all right so here i can see what exactly are the boundaries of my perineum they're quite similar to the pelvic outlet boundaries right you can see the diamond being formed can you see it like that the superficial boundary of the perineum is basically containing your external genitalia and your buttocks so it's basically anteriorly bounded by the uh, external genitalia like the scrotum and the mons pubis in the females posteriorly are the buttocks and uh, on either side are the uh, upper part of your medial parts of the thighs. That's the superficial uh, boundary of the perineum. All right. And what about the deep boundaries of the perineum? Basically, the pelvic outlet boundaries. Anteriorly, you can see the pubic arch. Posteriorly, you can see the tip of the coccyx. And on either side, you'll just describe what you see the ischiopubic rami, the ischial tuberosity, and the sacrotuberous ligaments. These are uh, on both of the sides. So that these are the boundaries of the perineum. So what happens? This diamond shaped, if you divide it into two halves, uh, by a transverse line what do you think will be formed two triangles will be formed right so passing a line between the ischial tuberosities a transverse line divides your perineum into an anterior part and a posterior part this anterior part is what is known as the urethra is here the genital organ opening is here so it's the urogenital triangle all right and the posterior part is the anal region. Let me just give you a basic of the anal region. Anal region is basically uh, in the median plane, you'll see the termination of the anal canal. On, and on either sides of the anal canal, you'll see these two spaces called the ischioanal fossas. The important part about these ischioanal fossas is that on the lateral wall of the ischioanal fossas will be your pudendal canal. And the pudendal canal carry, carries your pudendal nerves and internal pudendal vessels, which are the chief supply of neurovascular bundle for your entire perineal area and this is the line passing so this is your urogenital triangle if i pass line from here and posteriorly is this anal region uh, today we're discussing more specifically your urogenital triangle uh, the intro of it at least before i talk about that i'd like to talk about the perineal body so what is a perineal body it's basically a fibromuscular node location where all the muscles of your uh, lower pelvic area are going to converge all these muscles are about 10 in number and this perineal body is lying about 1.25 centimeter anterior to the anal canal 
and it is lying in the median plane right about here this is like the strongest part of your entire pelvic floor because it's going to support your organs right the perineal body is of importance because uh, usually in childbirth when uh, an episiotomy is given or when there's pressure applied to your perineal body it may get weak and when the perineal body gets weak your pelvic viscera that are lying inside your pelvis I told you that perineal body is chiefly supporting your your entire pelvis so when it is a little bit ruptured what will happen your uterus might prolapse or urinary bladder might prolapse so prolapse can occur in those uh, women that have undergone childbirth so that is a clinical importance of the perineal body now let's go ahead and discuss a little about the urogenital triangles firstly let's talk about how it begins obviously there's a skin right uh, in the urogenital region skin is consisting of the mons pubis in the females and its skin is consisting of the scrotum uh, for the males right uh, after the skin is removed what will come the superficial fascia comes right the superficial fascia of the perineal region around the urogenital triangle consists of your similar to your abdomen a superficial fatty layer and a deep membranous layer i want you to remember this very well the deep membranous layer is called the colles fascia so when i remove the skin what i'll see is a superficial fatty layer i'll remove that what i'll see is a deep membranous layer which will be covering a uh, urogenital triangle this uh, membranous layer is known as the colles fascia uh, the attachments of the colles fascia is super important it is attached on either side to the pubic arch posteriorly it is attached to the perineal membrane anteriorly it is continuous with the fascia of the scrotum and the fascia of the penis all right this attachment is very important if you know that the colles fascia was extending uh, from uh, the fascia scarpa of the abdomen and it was continuous as the colles fascia right so if there's any rupture of your uh, urethra in this superficial area uh, it's called superficial extravasation of the urine will occur Uh, how will it occur obviously because the colles fascia is attached here and above it is continuous with the abdominal wall the urine can easily leak into the abdominal wall will go into the superficial perineal pouch and it will even leak into the scrotum and the penis because it's continuous with their fascias however it will be restricted from going into the anal region because of its attachment to the perineal membrane and it is also restricted from going into the thigh so that was the uh, superficial fascia of your uh, urogenital triangle so what about the deep fascia of the urogenital triangle because after we uh, take this layer off what will we see the deep fascia now the deep fascia of the urogenital triangle is what we call the perineal membrane so perineal membrane is basically the deep fascia of your urogenital triangle is a triangular membrane and anteriorly it is attached to the arcuate ligament of the pubis we all know uh, below the pubic arch there is an arcuate ligament over here it is attached and itself it is thickened to form the transverse perineal ligament all right laterally it is attached to the ischiopubic rami all right and posteriorly it is continuous with the fascia over the deep transverse perineal and posteriorly this perineal membrane is going to have a free border so you can see this is the free border of the perineal membrane because it does not have any extensions or attachments beyond this border the perineal membrane is lying basically within deep to this deep to this entire structure your perineal membrane is lying like about here all right this part will be the perineal membrane so this is the perineal membrane and it is lying basically like that and uh, anteriorly attached to the arcuate ligament laterally to the conjoined ischiopubic rami and posteriorly you can see here it has a free border and this perineal membrane and its free border is attached to the colles fascia that we just talked about so what is the uh, importance of this perineal membrane is that it divides your urogenital triangle into a superficial part and a deep part this part superficial to the perineal membrane is known as the superficial perineal pouch and the deep part that you can see right here i hope you can see this area this area is known as the deep perineal pouch so the perineal membrane is essential to divide the urogenital triangle into a superficial perineal pouch and a deep perineal pouch and these two pouches are what we're going to talk about in the next video that was all for today i really hope you understood the perineum area well stay tuned join me in the next video and thank you so much for watching